Yo, how's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and welcome to another review of the Pokemon aimed via Pokemon Master miniseries. Today, we will be covering Episode 4, and Ash, Misty, and Brock have traveled to an unknown region in the Pokemon world. We went from Galar, a place we know of, to being back in an unknown area of the Pokemon world. It's an icy area. And there's a bear tick that's, uh, yeah, it's struggling with its ice-type moves, so, uh, yeah. So how was this episode overall? Well, before we get onto that, you guys know the drill. If you're someone that's new to the channel, like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It'd be pretty awesome if you would do that. But I think we should probably start talking about this episode now. So, Ash, Misty, and Brock have come across the Magikarp Waterfall, where they want to see some Magikarp that are uh, jumping up the waterfall, going up it. Well, too bad, because, uh, yeah, the the waterfall is literally frozen, so Ash takes out his Oshawott. It's one of four Pokemon that he has brought with him for this episode, and Pikachu uses Iron Tail to try and break apart the ice to unthaw it, so that they can uh, get the Magikarp to come out and, uh, yeah, enjoy the Magikarp Falls. And then they end up running the bear tick, which, uh, yeah, he's just freezing everything in sight. Like, everything's getting frozen. Pokemon are getting frozen. Ash's Pokemon are getting frozen. Ash himself gets frozen as well. It just can't control its ice. So for the Pokemon that Ash brought with him for this episode, as I mentioned just a minute ago, Oshawa was brought in this episode. We have Snorlax coming back, Talonflame, and of course, our boy Incineroar. It's finally time. Incineroar is here. He's finally going to battle. He's finally going to do something. And he's pretty much a heater for the episode. At least he uses Darkest Lariat in the episode. But, yeah, Snorlax shows up, breaks some ice, and that's pretty much it for Snorlax, which I thought was kind of, uh, yeah. Well, I'll save that for the con section, I guess. Um, Talonflame and Incineroar literal, literally were just like, heaters for the episode. Literally. And Cinnamore basically just unthawed ice and basically acted as a heater throughout the episode along with Talonflame. So yeah, there's that. But hey, Brock and Misty actually brought out a Pokemon that we haven't seen in a while from each of them. We have Starmie for Misty, which we haven't seen Starmie in a long time. And then Brock's Fortress, which we have not seen Fortress in a very long time as well. Which uh, they actually made a mistake here because... Uh, Brock caught Fortress in a fastball, but um, in a, in a regular Pokeball, so, uh, oof. But pretty much what's going on here is that Ash is bonding with Beartick, trying to get Beartick to control its ice, get it under control. And I thought it was interesting that uh, they're having Beartick try to recreate the seashell that Oshawa has and make like a little icicle or ice version, I should say. And it unfortunately doesn't work, and eventually Beartick gets frustrated. And it basically throws a temper, temper tantrum and uh, breaks apart the ice, and they all fall basically into this. The, it looks like a lake, I guess. It's not really a lake, they just fall in the, this ice cavern like area, I guess. Ash injures his foot, and basically the only way to get out is for Beartick to get its ice under control, which it does. It actually gets it under control, and they're able to get out. Brock treats Ash's leg, and Beartick creates an ice version of Oshawott's seashell. And also Latias is here, uh, once again, making its uh, regular appearance, as it's probably going to be appearing regularly throughout this series. So, uh, yeah. Eventually, the waterfall unthaws, and they're able to enjoy the Magikarp and the Magikarp Falls. And yeah, that's pretty much the episode. So overall, this episode was pretty average in my opinion. It just kind of feels like a typical Pokemon episode, I guess. <laughs> um, it's probably my least favorite of the four episodes we've gotten so far. Um, and it's not that it's like a completely bad episode, it's just like the plot is kind of just something that we've gotten before in Pokemon where Ash bonds with a Pokemon whether it's one of his own or just a Pokemon in the wild he works with it and then eventually you know that Pokemon overcomes his weakness he technically did this with uh, Dragonite when it was a Dragonair before evolving into Dragonite earlier on in Pokemon Journeys 
kind of the same thing. So something like this, it's kind of just, you know, we've we've been there, done that. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to kind of build towards Ash realizing that he's a Pokemon master now because he's gained an understanding of Pokemon and a love of Pokemon, and he's realizing that he'll eventually realize that he's a Pokemon master. I think that's kind of like where the series is heading from here. But I will say that there were some things I did like in this episode. I like when Ash was bonding with Bear Tick, Misty and Brock are over here like, yeah, this is just like Ash. He still loves Pokemon, and he's reaching through to Bear Tick. So that's really cool. That's really nice to see. Um, Oshawa, out of all the Pokemon, I felt got the best shine here. I really like that uh, Oshawa's seashell was basically the basis for uh, Bear Tick getting its ice under control, and eventually it creates an ice version of the seashell. So... That was really cool. It was really nice. So, yeah. Way to go, Oshawa. The uh, MVP of Ash's Pokemon in this episode. One thing I will say I didn't really care for in this episode was, once again, how Ash's Pokemon were being utilized. Oshawa. Awesome. Snorlax was kind of just there for just breaking ice, and that was it. A little underwhelming there, especially if that's the last time we'll see Snorlax, but, um... Who knows, maybe he'll appear again at, in the very last episode. But, yeah, that was a little bit on the underwhelming side. Uh, Talonflame, really not doing a whole lot either. It, along with Incineroar, were pretty much heaters throughout the episode. I mean, it's cool that Incineroar used Darkest Lariat. That's cool. I really just wish that Incineroar actually got to battle. That is something we have not seen since it evolved. I have been waiting and waiting for Incineroar to battle. I was hoping that Incineroar would participate in a PWC match. Like if they did one in Alola, it, it participates in it. I've been waiting for that to happen and we still haven't gotten that. And we probably aren't ever going to get it now. As uh, Incineroar was literally just a heater in the episode. So yeah, when it comes to that, that's actually kind of the biggest issue I probably had with the episode. The plot is also, you know, like I mentioned, it's just something we've seen before, so overall, just an average episode. Not the worst episode. But yeah, I'll probably end off the review here, so I'm going to give this episode a 5 out of 10. So in the comment section down below, post your thoughts. What do you think of this episode? Did you love this episode? Did you hate this episode? What are your thoughts for the remaining seven episodes for this series? Is there something you want to see before this series comes to an end and Ash's story ends? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And guys, have a good day or night, Rurat, and I'll see you all later. Bye!